Good morning everyone and welcome. I am Jeanette from Crafty Clegs Creations and you can find me on most social media platforms. I'm most active on Instagram as Crafty Clegs Creations but I do have a Facebook account also Crafty Clegs Creations and on YouTube and I also have a little Etsy shop. Um, today is Tuesday the 19th of May and it is about 11.15. So welcome. Welcome to all my old subscribers or current subscribers should I say and I have had quite a new influx, an influx of new subscribers so thank you for joining, for joining me and welcome. How are you all coping? Um, we're all fine. We've had a birthday this week in our family. It was our eldest's granddaughter, Gracie. She was 11 this week, going on 21, let me tell you. She looks, she's so tall. Um, she's got long, beautiful brown hair, so tall. She does not look like 11 years old, let me tell you. It's frightening how quickly they grow up. Anyway, we went over to their house and we had coffee and cake. Um, with them to celebrate her birthday. Obviously we were social distancing, we was in the garden and they was in the house so we did it all through the screens or the glass window but it was just nice to get out, really enjoyed it. Um, so we did that on Sunday. We, <clears throat> Our routine of the week now is shop one day, post office another. So Tim normally goes to the supermarket and does all our shopping on the Monday, we just go once a week. And then on a Friday, he goes to the post office for me and he, we post off all my um, Etsy shop orders. I do only go and post once a week. If somebody is desperate for something or, you know, it's for a birthday or anything like that, and if there is any request, he will go and take it. But we are trying to just keep it to once a week, just for obvious reasons, safety reasons. Um, so, yeah, that's what we do every week. Um, we've been doing quite a bit of baking. Tim's made quite a few homemade breads. We've done cakes. On Sunday, because it was Grace's birthday, it was nice that we joined in. She had pancakes for breakfast, so we thought we'd have them as well. So that was nice. Um, and other than that, really, we've been doing quite a lot of walking. Um, normal everyday chores, housework, laundry. Uh, we've got quite a lot of jobs done in the house. Tim is currently downstairs adding furniture to a door that's being fitted in this room. But I will tell you about that in a little while. Um, when we went for a walk last week, I don't know if, um, well, some of you might know, but those new, those that are new might not. My husband retired this year um, about six weeks ago. And we had really big plans for his retirement. Well, Timothy had big plans. He'd made them all, but I was happy to tag along. He wanted to go to, when he'd retired, as soon as he retired, he wanted to go over to Italy, to Verona, and spend some time there. And he's also got this really big idea that he wants to go out, buy a couple of rucksacks, fill it with the most bare minimum supplies that we need, i.e. clothes, toiletries, such things, put it on our back and off we go. Get a bus, get a train, it, 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 no plans, he didn't want any plans, he just wanted to set off and go. Maybe in this country we might start, we might start in another country. Anyway, that's what he wanted to do this year and obviously our plans have been scampered because of the current situation, so that's not going to happen. Um, and when I was, we was walking out the other day around um, the reservoir where we normally walk and I asked him how he felt about it all. I said, did it make him sad? And he said he didn't feel sad about it. If it felt very sorry that it was all happening, and he hoped, you know, he wished it wasn't like all of us do. He said he, he's, the only feelings he has really was that he felt a little bit disappointed. Disappointed, I guess, that he'd worked hard all his life. And Tim is a very, very hard working man. I can't take that away from him. Um, that the things that he'd worked for all his life, all of a sudden, had to be put on hold and like he said at his age I mean Tim's um, 66 this year he said when you get to a certain age putting things on time on hold you know and especially something like that that he wants to do isn't always ideal is it but there's not very much we can do about it so yeah we're all just plodding on we're all fine we're all fit and healthy and right now that's all that matters 
and um, what else? The dog, Zach. Let me tell you about Zach. So um, he had all his tests done, as you all know, and I don't know if, I can't quite remember if last time I saw he'd had his blood tests. Anyway, to cut a very, very long story short regarding the vets, back and forth, I can't tell you how many times, um, and not at a cheap price, let me tell you. Um, we have now found the dog is 110% better because they thought he had thyroid problems. So the tablets that are that he's on are called thyroxin. He's been on them now for about, is this his second? It's either his second or his third week. And he's like a new dog. He's got energy, his appetite is back, he's stopped moping around. I mean, he's an old dog, so obviously there's limits to what he can do because he's an old dog. But he's a different dog altogether. So we think, fingers crossed, he's got to go back again in another two weeks. Um, we think, fingers crossed, that we found what the problem is and hopefully we might be able to stretch another year out of him. Who knows? Um, so yeah, so that's that. Um, so, I shall, yes, I think what I'm going to do is, um, I'll tell you about my, my craft room afterwards. I'm going to get on and show you what I've been doing. So, the first thing I'm going to do is show you what's on my hook or my needles. Um, I haven't been very active, to be fair, regarding knitting, crocheting or anything like that. I've been mainly sewing. Um, I have, you know, I have done some things, but... What I have done um, has not been a great amount. I certainly haven't got any finished items, but then that's nothing new for me just recently. I seem to start lots of things but can't finish anything. But you never, you know, it will, they will get finished. Anyway, I'm, I'm waffling, aren't I? Sorry. So the first thing I'm going to show you is in my, I made this bag for myself. This is my little mushroomy gnome patchwork bag. I made this for myself. This is a little brooch that Tim bought me. And in here is my <coughs> Moonwake shawl by Andrea Maori. I'm sorry if the lighting isn't very good. It's a bit dull outside, but... And I think, I'm not sure, let me just have a look, but I think I'm almost... I'm three quarters of the way through one pattern repeat. So like I say, I've not really done very much since last time I showed it to you. So there you go. I love colour work um, because I think colour work is such an easy thing to do and yet it looks very, very, very complicated and it's not at all. Um, obviously you have to carry your, I don't know if anybody's ever done colour work before, so you have to carry your, your thread across um which uh, you know uh, sometimes can be a pain if you're trying to watch tv and you get a bit tangled and but i just love it because i, I just think it just gives such a really really nice effect um i'm going to try and get some more of this done um so yeah that's how far i've got with my moon wake shawl i will put um all the names I'm not going to put the links because the, all what I'm making are all very, very well known. So you can go off and find the links yourself. But I will put the names of everything that I show you in the description box below. And then you can see if you want to go off and have a look. They're so accessible and all um, on the internet, basically. So, yeah, that's it. It's done on, I think it's 4.5. Yeah, 4.5 Chai Gu. I love these needles. It's done on that. And I am using the Millamina Sweden. This is such a lovely yarn. It's an Aran weight. Um, it feels, it really does feel beautiful. It's a beautiful, beautiful yarn. Very thick because obviously the colour work and you have to carry your, your colour at the back. They call that something. I can't think what it's called. Um, I'll find out for next time but yeah but yeah it's lovely so that's that's what I have I, I did a little bit of work on that actually last night only about six or seven rounds 
can't seem to keep my concentration on anything at the moment. I seem to be really struggling, concentrating. Um, and I think subconsciously I'm doing it. I don't know I can't concentrate and I'm beavering away doing what I'm doing. And then when I'm looking, I'm having to pull back two or three rounds of my work because I'm obviously I'm not concentrating. So yeah, that's my first thing, my moon wake shawl. And then the next thing that I'm making is, is an amigurumi toy, which is in my lovely bag that my dear friend Dawn, let me show you, from Dawn's days. I love this fabric. If you, have, if you haven't been over and seen Dawn, um, she's also on YouTube and Instagram and she's known as Dawn's days. Head over and, and have a look at her. She's so crafty. I love all the things she does. Anyway, Dawn very kindly made me this bag. We did a little bit of a swap, so it's, it's in here. And what I am doing is called the Mushroom Fairy. Now, this lady is, um, I'm not sure if she's a Turkish lady. She's called um, Sed Sedef Bey. Sedef Bey. I, I will put this in the description box below so you can see. I'm not really sure how to pronounce that. Anyway, this is what I'm making. It's a pattern by this lady. I just love it. It's just so cute. What I'm up to at the moment, let me just tell you, it does look a bit odd. But I think a lot of these things that you make always do look quite odd until right towards the end. So here she is. This is all I've got up to. So she, a body, the legs are done. You do both the legs and then you join them, excuse me, under the groin here. So you join them. So then after you've got the legs and you've joined them together, it's all done in one, one solid piece. So next is the arms. So I've got to do the arms next. And then I think it's the hair and then the body and uh, the outfit rather for the body. But I was watching um, on youtube again a lady called i think she's called elise and she's from Le petite saint crochet she's a wonderful i love she's just such a wonderful lady she's really upbeat and cheerful and she's just so easy to watch and i was um flicking back through her previous podcasts um i must have just been having one of them days where i was just watching podcasts because I could and I come across one of her podcasts where she'd introduced this free download for you it's a for amigurumi project page downloads and there's one for knitting and one for crocheting as well so she's thought about everything and in it there's the pattern so you can you can always remember what you've what you've done which I think is brilliant is the pattern name, the design, the cost of the pattern, the finished dimensions, yarn, colour used, hook size, whether it was difficult or not, your notes. And she's even put little holes down here that you can punch out to put pieces of the yarn that you've used so you can see what you made it in. Um, I've coloured mine in, I've used my coloured pencils and I haven't filled this in yet because I have, I've decided that I'm going to fill this in when I've finished. Um, but so yeah, I've got one of those and I've decided I'm going to keep a record of all the amigurumi that I make. Um, because this this is my passion. This is what I normally do make a lot of amigurumi. So this is just a nice little extra for you to keep and look back on if you ever want to make it again. And you can see what you've used. And I mean, with amigurumi, I do like it because I always use cotton. Um, because it's a nice tight stitch and you see the definition and you don't see the stuffing through the cotton and I love that but you can use it in you know you can make amigurumi in any size really so you can enlarge the dolls make them smaller um, so yeah I loved that I love that so thank you very much Elise I think that's how you pronounce the name so that's the other thing that I'm making at the moment um, <coughs> And really, them are the only two things that I've got on the go. Well, no, that's not true. I've got a lot of things on the go. I've got cardigans that need finishing, crocheted cardigans. I've got hats that need finishing. I've got cowls that are queuing up that I bought patterns and kits for. 
<coughs> excuse me, February. I've just got so much, it's just ridiculous. But then I guess most crafters have really. Anyway, I will get on um, to my finished items. Let me have a sip of my tea. My, it's actually coffee, not tea, is in my Erdy cup again. I decided that I'd have this cup today because it's a nice big cup and I needed a nice big cup of coffee. So let me show you what I've finished. So the first thing I've finished is out of the Peak Pal book. And I've made this for, <coughs> I am making toys for less fortunate children at Christmas. I came across a lady on Facebook who is after gifts, whether they be knitted, crocheted, sewn, anything, any kind of gift for children that are really underprivileged and probably wouldn't get very much at Christmas. So I've decided that I'm going to make quite a few things and send them off to her. I've made quite a few things already. They're all on the bed lined up in the spare bedroom. Um, I will take a picture and show you and insert it here for you to have a look. Um, but this is the latest thing that I've made and it is Hans Grizzly Bear. Out of the Peak Power book. There's a new one of these being released I think it's June. You could have pre-ordered it. Um, but yeah, I think it was. it's in June. Anyway. <coughs> so this is my finished bear. Is he not the cutest thing ever? I actually think it wasn't me that noticed it was Tim. His nose is slightly that side where it should be more this side. But I said to Tim, you know what? It doesn't matter. A child will probably really appreciate this and really love it. So, it's got, you can take everything off. It's got a scarf, waistcoat and a hat and everything comes off. So if they want to dress it or undress it and play with it or do whatever. So yeah, that's one of my um, toys that are going to go off to the children that need extra special care. And I loved it. I think that's really nice. Again, I've done cotton. This is done in Sheepy's Katona. 2.5 crochet hook. I always use um, Clover Amore, soft handle touch. Um, toy stuffing, normal toy stuff fit stuffing. I always use safety eyes. Try and embroider on whenever I can if it's going to a child, just for safety reasons. Um, and it was a really nice make. Very easy to follow the pattern. Patterns in the book are absolutely wonderful. Really easy to follow. Um, and I thoroughly enjoyed making it. So yeah, that's for sending off. So that's my first thing that I've finished. The second thing that I finished is from my Crocheted Home Book by Emma Lamb. Let me find the picture for you so you can get a, a sort of gist of what it looks like. And it's the pot holder. Right, so what I'm going to say about this, um, do I like it? I absolutely love it. Absolutely love it. It's called, by the way, sorry, the Philip Daisy pot holder. I absolutely love it. Would I make another one? Most definitely not. I enjoyed making the first round. You have to make two of exactly the same thing. And one's front, one's back. And halfway around the back, you have to then join them together. So they're obviously one piece. And I didn't enjoy it at all. It wasn't an easy, it wasn't easy. Um, I thought it made it look very untidy. If I, if I ever did make it again, I would crochet them both separate. And I would somehow tack them together. Anyway, here we go. It's all finished if you can see that so I've this one is I did it in the DMC Petra it was done on again a 2.5 millimeter hook same clover and more so the middle is the cream 
and then I did a slip stitch in, I don't know if you can see that, I did a slip stitch in a green and then I did the scalloped edge in, I don't know the colour of these because I just had them spare and I didn't have a ball band but it's like, um, a, I don't know, what would you call that, like a wine colour. So yes, this is going to go up on my wall in the craft room somewhere here. Obviously we won't be using it as a, a pot holder. Um, when I say obvious, because Tim knows anything that I've made and if it's, he, he can't touch it, it's not not for him. <laughs> I like things to be nice and sm you know shiny and new and I don't like him touching or using anything like this. So yeah, it's going to go as a display. I don't know if you can see this one here. There's one just there. And my friend um, Andrea crocheted that for me oh, many, many years ago. Many, many years ago. It was so funny. We used to, in our knit group, we used to go once a year. There is a hotel in Blackpool, which is not far from where we live, maybe an hour's drive, and it's dedicated to knitters and crocheters. It's actually a hotel for knitters and crocheters. So we used to go once a year and have a long weekend there all our knit group sometimes there was 10 12 maybe 14 of us and it we always went round about my birthday and i remember her uh, being in the back of the car finishing this off for a birthday gift for me so yeah so yeah i'm going to put that up with that one really really like it but don't think i'd want to make another one but there is other ones in here that i quite like that don't I've had a read through the book like I really quite like this one and you don't join that one back and front that's not done like that so I might do that quite fancy having um quite a few of these hung on the wall as as decorations really nice book this highly recommend anybody who wants to crochet for the home highly recommend this book it's a really really nice book so that's that one um Right, what have I got lined up? Let me tell you, a lot of, a lot of things lined up. Um, I was rooting through, um, I have a box of um, kits and um, material that I bought for myself or kits that I bought for myself and I have, whenever I buy them, obviously, you know, there's no way I can do all the things that I buy all at once. So I always have them in a box and try and have um, a bit of a, a routine of doing one or two a month anyway I was looking through my box the other day for something to do and I came across a gift that Angela bought me um, and to be fair sounds terrible but I can't remember if it was for my birthday whether it was for Christmas I can't remember when it was anyway she'd bought me this really nice kit by Lynette Anderson um, and I think I'm not really sure let me just show it to you so there it is I'm not really sure what it is, but I think it's a pin cushion, but it's quite big, so it might be a cushion. Actually, I've not had a look to see what the finishing size is. Oh yeah, it's not, it's a, it's a cushion, it's not a pin cushion, because the actual finishing size is 11 and a half inches by 13 and a half inches, so it's got to be a cushion. How beautiful is that? And because I've got into hand embroidery, I thought I'd have a go at it. And the kit, what it comes, with everything that you need in the kit. There's all, let me just show you, and it's all pre-cut. I really do like an, an Annette Anderson, Lynette Anderson's fabric. It's all pre-cut. Some beautiful fabrics, it's got the lace in it. That must be the front of the cushion because the back of the cushion is all um, patchwork. So I guess that you have to, these are all the strips that you have to cut up into patchwork. So there's loads and loads of them. Anyway, so that's that. And then there's um, an embroidery for the front of it, which I've already found a hoop. So that is what I'm going to do. I'm going to try and embroider this, see how it works out. There is all the instructions, full instructions in there again let me show you obviously don't want to give too much away because it's a paid for pattern but it does show you how to do 
all the stitches which because I'm quite new to embroider that's quite good for me really um, gives you all the designs and all the stitches so yeah I'm quite looking forward to doing that so that's one thing I've got lined up um, while I was in the same box routine I found this doll came out so let me just take that off this doll came out in the shop Angela's design just before I unfortunately lost my job due to the coronavirus um, and I bought this the week off Angela the week that I left so I found it and I thought I would she's called Valentina I think that's what she's called yeah she's called Valentina I don't know if you can see it because of the she's such a gorgeous little doll so I think I might make this one for me see how it turns out you get again you get all the everything that you need the only thing that you don't get in Angela's kits are stuffing and thread so everything else in there is, is, is in there for me to make Valentina so I might make this one for me see how it turns out and if it turns out okay then I will I've got lots of scraps of fab when I say scraps big enough to do this um, that I could make another one for so I might try and make that and send that off for the children at Christmas that I'm making all the toys for so that's another thing that I've got lined up I'm gonna be busy aren't I so the next thing um, I was um, watching um, another podcast um, it's is it called El is it Ellie from Craft House Magic and she had made a couple of podcasts ago a little tiny hexagon needle case and I loved it it was really nice so I decided to go on and she told everybody where she'd got it from it was a free download so I decided to go on the website and have a look round well I had to buy a little pattern and this is the hexagon sewing case by Emma Jones from Vintage Sewing Box let me show it to you I don't know can you see that um, so I've decided to have a go at making this so I've, I've printed it all out and printed off the pattern and cut up the pattern I've I or I always with my patterns I always put um, th them through the um, oh what's the machine called oh dear me I am so bad I swear to God being stuck in the house is making me lose some brain cells because I just cannot think of names anymore and anyway let me think no it's gone from me I've remembered it's a laminator so I always put my pattern pieces through the laminator and cut them out so then you know if you want to ever use them again it keeps them nice and safe and they don't get you know crumpled up and such like anyway I've cut my pattern pieces out and I'm all sorted and I decided that I was going to make myself just for this project a new project bag so I made myself one of these clear is it open the zipper clear vinyl pouches and I made this out of all my scraps of tilde so all the ones in the middle are just this you know the thin strips that I had and I had quite a big piece of this florally like patterny type left so I've made that and I've started I've not sewn any together yet but I've started cutting out and I'm using oops I'm using um, my Liberty fabrics some gorgeous Liberty fabrics ever so pretty and then the middle one this is for the middle of the hexagon you um, embroider it at lazy daisy on that lazy daisy is that right and then there's another couple so yeah that's another one I've got lined up and then the last thing that I've got lined up <laughs> I've wanted to make this for some time actually and I went to um, house sit and dog sit for my daughter in Froome in February and while I was there I visited a shop called yarn for the soul and the lady who owns the shop Kater she's a lovely lovely lady um, I decided that while I was there I would buy some floof and it's a really really beautiful soft pink um, here's the label let me show you the label 
it's yarn for the soul and it's 74 <coughs> percent excuse me baby surrey alpaca and 26 percent mulberry silk and it's called baby powder i mean i don't know if you can see that it's just such a gorgeous gorgeous color really soft and gentle and just after that this hat pattern came out by emily clawson from meanwhile at the class castle she bought brought out the altar hat and it's held together the pattern is held together with a mohair or a floof this, this is what this is i think this is what they call floof and a fingering weight and I couldn't find anything that I really liked that was as soft as that. So I decided that I wanted to try and have a go at dyeing some of my own yarn. So yesterday my... Oh, my camera's losing power. Um, yesterday my um, yarn came. I ordered some yarn. And this is 75% superwash merino and 25% nylon and it's a four ply weight so i'm going to try dyeing some yarn that will go very nicely with this to make the altar hat so that's another thing that i've got going um so yeah that's it at the moment i'm sorry it's been a bit of a jumpy one um yeah I, I, i'm a bit um not professional aren't I? and i'm sorry about that and I, you know i could re i could revamp it all again and start all over again but i'm not because i want you all to see this is me <laughs> you know i i am what i am and you know anyway i'll stop um babbling and tell you the last couple of things first of all i don't know as if any of you i wanted to just show you this for fun i don't know if any of you've seen this whenever i go out i always wear a mask and i always wear gloves um and Timothy has bought us masks off the internet with filters in, so they're all, you know, they're all quite safe and we're not taking any any um, supplies from anybody that we shouldn't be. But the other week, I don't know if you saw this, but Tim designed himself a mask and I just thought I'd show it to you. I have put it on my Instagram account, but if you don't, you know, follow me on Instagram. And so let me just put this on and show you the mask that I made. What do you think? Tim thinks it's wonderful because it covers, I don't know if you can hear me, because it covers quite a lot of my face. I think it's fabulous. Anyway, I just thought I'd show you that because I thought you might like it. Um, right, so before I go, I've got a little bit of an announcement. Um, first of all, let me just tell you, um, thank you so much for anybody who's purchased from my etsy shop i have sold over half of my advent calendars in fact i think there's only about five left i'm blown away with how quickly they've gone i'm having so much fun sourcing or i could let me tell you ladies and gents i could put you so much in these advent calendars I'm having so much fun finding gifts for you. It really, really has been really, really good. Um, I have done also done a little shop update. There's a few new bags in there, a couple of new stitch markers. Um, so, yeah, if you fancy a new purchase or anybody needs a new project bag, I shall put my link to my Etsy shop in the description box below along with my Instagram um, feed. And the other thing is that I wanted to tell you about so exciting my friend in the Netherlands Dawn decided one day um, that she fancied having a go at um, crocheting birds and basically decorating this bird cage she'd seen it on Instagram or Facebook or I, I can't remember where she'd actually seen it I will find out and put a link to where she'd found it so she decided that she wanted to have a go at decorating this birdcage, which she did. And let me tell you, she did an amazing, amazing job. Anyway, I saw it and you know what you like. What we like us crafters. Oh, I'd like to have a go at that. And unfortunately, because of the current situation, I couldn't go out and source a bigger birdcage. I just happened to have a really, really tiny one. Anyway, I had a go at doing it myself. And Dawn and I often talk 
mo well not most days but Dawn and I often exchange messages we whatsapp each other and chat to each other and she come back to me this particular day and said to me what fun would it be if we did a make along a crochet along so I said what what you, what do you mean so she said well why don't we do a um, yarn bird mal crochet along so it would be so much fun you could crochet a bird you could knit a bird it could be in a cage it could be on a perch you could knit or crochet um, a bunting with birds on so it would be anything at all to do with birds but it has to be knitted or crocheting so you'd have to get you know creative um, you could do a bird cage. I am just in the middle of um, make. Well, when I say I'm in the middle, we're just trying to construct Tim and I a birdhouse because I'm going to yarn bomb a birdhouse. Anyway, so we've decided to do a make along together. I will put the hashtag, which is going to be hashtag yarn bird mal 2020. And I just think it would be so nice for us all to just do something. You know, just something fun, um, just something creative, small projects. So it's not over indulging or, you know, you don't have to overthink it. You could perhaps yarn bomb something in a couple of days and it'd be done. So if you'd like to join us, unfortunately, you do have to have an Instagram account because it's going to be on Instagram. Um, if you head over, I'll put my Instagram feed down there as well as Dawn's. Um, and if you want to join in, you can make a bird, house, like a set, cage, anything, as long as it's yarn. Um, and if you want to join in, the hashtag is hashtag yarnbirdmal2020. Um, head over to Dawn's page. Her, her yarn bird is just brilliant. A cage is brilliant. And like I say, I only had a tiny one. I will show you mine. Are you ready for this? Um, I only had a tiny one, but at least I tried. So here we go. Da, 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 da. <laughs> so I don't know if you can see it very well. So I have done a little bird, a little tiny bird on its perch. Tim put, the, put me a perch in. I've done some little balls for it to play with, hanging balls. It's also got, where can you see here, it's also got mirror and some bunting and then on the outside I've spread leaves around and then at the bottom it's just got like a little paper. This is actually a candle holder for a very well known brand, that's all I'm saying. So how exciting is that? mine and dawn's first make along i really really hope you'll join us it's going to be so much fun so for now that's it um like i say i'll put all the links what i've made anything i've talked about i'll put it all in the description box below um and i just hope you'll join in and have a bit of fun with us it's just fun there will be prizes so the prize is for, unlike Dawn says, for the best, whatever the best is. But we're going to pick two people out of, um, Dawn will pick one and I'll pick one. And the winner will get, um, I'm going to make a project bag, a notion pouch, and I'm going to put you a few goodies in there. Um, maybe a few stitch markers. I don't know. I'll wrap you up a few goodies, maybe a few cups of tea, some chocolate. I'll make you up a nice prize and Dawn is going to do the same. She's going to, I don't know if Dawn's going to do a drawstring bag or she loves making pouches, Dawn. So whether she'll do that and um, a notion pouch and a few other bits and pieces, but there will be a prize. And Dawn will pick one and, well, I'm guessing that's what we're going to do. We've not discussed who will pick what yet, but I would imagine Dawn will pick one and I'll pick one and there will be prizes for the winner. Um, so I really, really hope you'll join in. Um, and just be one more thing again before I go. I'm digressing, aren't I? Um, I don't know if last time everybody seen my last podcast, um, but I did um, a couple of months ago, maybe now, do a little two. I made two little cats, which could be pincushions, just decorative things. Um, 
but I'm still waiting for the lady to get back to me. Um, if I haven't heard anything by my next podcast, then I will ask somebody else to um, pick out a name and I'll send it on just to share a little bit of love. Um, but I've made something again for this one. I almost forgot, I've just seen it because I've got a pile of stuff here. So last night I made this tiny little bag and it's a pin cushion. It, it's just a, a little ornate pin cushion. So I made this because I wanted to send it to somebody at the end of the week just to share a little bit of love again. So if you know anybody who needs cheering up, who's a knitter or a crochet or a sewer or would just enjoy having that hanging somewhere um, and you want to nominate them, please do. I will pick somebody on Thursday because Tim will be going to the post on Friday. I'm not going to run it for a long time. Tim will be going to the post on Friday. So I will pick somebody on Thursday. So watch out if you do nominate somebody because I'll need their address. Um, so yeah, if you think somebody needs cheering up with just this little tiny handmade pincushion, stroke, ornament, whatever they want to use it for, just comment in the box below and I will pick somebody on Thursday and send this off to them just to cheer somebody up. And for now, that's it. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you all have a lovely week. I hope you stay safe and I shall see you next time. Take care. Bye bye. I also forgot to tell you, um, the reason Tim is downstairs fitting furniture to a door is that I am having my craft room revamped. I'm in the middle of emptying it. You can't see it and I can't show you around because the floor is just full to the brim of things. Um, so we're in the middle of emptying the room. We're completely emptying it. I'm going to put everything that I can't move in the middle of the room, cover it up with a big sheet and I'm having it all decorated. I'm having um, all new doors and coving and I'm currently looking for ideas for storage. Um, I could really do with a nice set of drawers for storage. Um, wall storage, anything like that. So I'm looking on um, certain websites and certain stores. Um, so yeah, that's what Tim is making the door for downstairs. Completely forgot to tell you. Um, so hopefully, I don't know, it might be might be just over two weeks till my ne next podcast. Could be three weeks, but hopefully next time I see you, we will have a whole new craft room. So <laughs> I'm excited. Um, so with that, yeah, I'll wish you goodbye and I'll see you later. Take care now. Thank you for watching. Mm -hmm. Bye. Mm -hmm.